Hey everybody, Luke Thompson here from Action VFX, and today I'm gonna walk you through two quick methods inside of Adobe After Effects to create realistic shadows and reflections. So let's jump right in. So you'll see in this shot that we have here uh, for our Fire Trails collection, the gymnasium floor is actually pretty reflective. So you can kind of see this column here that stretches down. Um, and so what I had to do for this shot was make it look like this thing is actually burning on the ground. You have our original background plate here. We've already cleaned it up and uh, denoised it, made it look a little, little more pretty. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solo out uh, the fire layer that I have here. So I've already created it to match our camera movement. And so this is a pre-rendered version. So as this plays here, you'll kind of see that it has the camera movement with it uh, throughout the remainder of this shot. But no reflection. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna back up here a little bit. We're going to uh, duplicate this fire layer and we're going to go ahead and rotate it. Um, so I'm gonna go 180 degrees this way and I'm also going to flip horizontal so that our edges are actually aligning properly here. I'll add our background plate into this solo layer so you can kind of have that as more reference. What I'm going to do now is um, lower the opacity for this reflection layer and then um, I'm going to add a blur. Let's start. All right, tens a bit intense for this so we could just kind of back it down to um, what looks good. And another big benefit that we have here is, like I mentioned earlier, we have those uh, r real reflections that were captured on set. And so you really need to, you know, use those as much as you can um, when referencing. So basically all I'm going to do for this is uh, try to match it up and keep it as realistic as I can to this. So obviously there's going to be other layers on top of this, like a glow, um, an area glow mixed in with the practical glow. Um, so I don't want to really overdo it too much, but make it realistic to fit the scene. So you can play around with that, um, play around with the blur amount as well. And uh, that's pretty much all you have to do for this technique to create that realistic um, reflection. Okay, so jumping into our next project here, now we're gonna focus on using this uh, Red Giant tool that we've been using a lot here lately, VFX Shadow by Red Giant. I'm basically just gonna run through uh, my process for making this shadow happen. When building this out, I realized, hey, I, I want this dirt blast like right up in front of the camera, and I want it to kind of like start blocking the direction of the sun. So the lighting is pretty uniform, it's kind of cloudy out. Um, but we just said, hey, this is our light source based on the things that we can see here. Um, and then we roll with this snap zoom anyway. But I still wanted this shadow um, so you could kind of see the scale of the dirt blast without having it distract too much from the shot. I've got our comp here. I've already soloed out all the layers that are important. So what I'm going to do first is take this dirt blast clip. And this is what it looks like. It's a pre-keyed ProRes version, so it's pretty standard. I mean, it's still got the ground and stuff, but a lot of detail there. Um, so I will go ahead and duplicate this so you can see what it looked like before. And we'll go ahead and solo this layer and then build it up from there. Okay, so I've dropped our dust explosion in this shot. We will go ahead and apply our shadow effect VFX Shadow by Red Giant. And you'll already see as I start to drag around this globe, you can see the projection of the shadow. And so all that it's doing on its side of things is taking the alpha from right here. And if you want a different source, if you want it to be lightness, luminance, etc., you can select that here. Um, but since this clip is pre-keyed and already has an alpha channel, it's just using that to generate um, this shadow, which is super awesome. So, I mean, this is like a, a couple click thing and you're done. Um, so you can position your effect where you're wanting this to take place, select your shadow source. So if it is something that's pre-keyed, it's extremely easy um, to do. 
and then you can change all of your other settings here. If you wanted to get into using different blending modes for this, um, you definitely could do that very easily. If you're wanting to bend your shadow and actually have it like hit the corner of a wall, like if we wanted it to slide up on this tank like this, we could, um, and create more edges to it. Very, very easy to do. Like I said, this is just a couple click process and, and you're done with this thing. Um, so I'm going to let this play through a little bit and you can already see how the shadow is just matching. And as I said, I just scaled the Dirt Blast up, put it uh, up in front of the camera there and changed the opacity of how that shadow interacted. Um, so in the final shot here, you'll see it's a lot lighter than it was when I was playing around with the effect. These are just a couple techniques that we've used in-house in the past that have worked really well for us. But these definitely aren't the only methods to achieve these results inside of After Effects or any other compositing software. We're wanting to do a lot more of these tutorials and quick tip videos, so if there's something specific you want us to cover, just let us know. But until next time, I'm Luke Thompson for ActionVFX.com.